All right, hi everybody. Welcome to Quarantine Cafe. We are here right now with DJ Nick Lovin. Uh, Actually, Nick is the first person that we've had on here twice. Uh, last time you were in a, a bit more of like a supporting role, I guess. So we thought it would be pretty sweet if we could have you come up and like do a, a full on DJ set for us. Uh, how are you? How's your quarantine been for the past like few weeks since the last time I talked to you, man? It's been pretty good. Still keeping busy with music and graphic design. And, you know, luckily I'm still working and uh, doing the best I can. Nice. Awesome. Uh, and can you tell us a little bit about your set that we're about to listen to? Yeah. So my set, you know, my type of production is very sample based. So I look at influences like Mad Lib and The Alchemist. And I mean, how can you forget Jay Dilla? But I like to take some of that like lo-fi samples from the internet, records, mix them together and make my own beats out of it. And what's really cool is when we could meet up, I would meet up at the end of every Friday with the Cambridge Hip Hop Collective for Bridgetide Cypher, and uh, I would perform these beats. So, you know, if you're a rapper out there and you feel the need to cypher right in your own home, please be free to do that. Yeah, awesome. And, and I actually remember the last time I, we, we talked, you actually sent me like a big thing of beats too that I haven't gotten a chance to start like messing around over yet, but I'm actually super pumped for that. Anyway, so let's give that a listen and then we'll be right back.
and we're back with DJ Nick Lovin. Okay, so here's something that I find interesting because, like I said, you're the first person that we've had on twice, and the first time you're in more of a supporting role. So when you do like a straight up DJ set versus like a, a set that somebody's rapping over, do you consider that when you're making beats? Do you consider that when you put your set together? Is it like a different process for you? So yes, it is kind of a different process for me. I use the same tools, right? So when a DJ asks me to support in like a live environment, they kind of give me MP3s with acapellas or no acapellas, no vocals or anything. Yep. So it's just the beat. And I'll lay that down and I'll play that when the time is right. However, when it comes to creating beats, I usually like finding something that resonates with me. So I'll go on like YouTube or I'll go through records and I'll see if there's, you know, certain elements in songs that might sound good as like a, like a beat. Right. Yeah. So then I'll take like an acapella from YouTube. I'll download that and put it to the beat. And, uh, you know, sometimes the beat will make it or break it is if, the acapella sounds really good on top of that beat, right? Yeah. Because it's got to be a beat that has rap to it or yeah. like a hook or anything like that. Um, obviously, there are some days where it's just like it's hit or miss, but I think the process for creating is completely different when it comes to just, you know, supporting 100%. Cool. Very cool. And, uh, and my next question, I guess, is, is because like, this is sort of like a, an aspect of music that I don't know anything about, you know, like um, making beats. So wh what kind of software do you use and what's your process like when you do it? Okay, so, dude, you have asked the right guy. <laughs> I love talking about this stuff. Cool. I use Ableton Live 10. Yep. Uh, I've saved up past couple of years just to go up to the suite edition because Ableton is not only a DAW, a digital audio workstation, it's a synth. It's a sampler. Okay. It's, it's got so many different elements to music production that you can use that there's not one single way to do a certain thing that you need. With a lot of research and sample packs and whatnot, I bring that all together to kind of create my own, you know, soundtrack to my own life. You know what I mean? It's almost like an adventure myself. Like, at one point, Callum, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. <laughs> I wanted to learn, right? So I started learning and I started learning Ableton and then buying records and digging and getting into it. And, you know, past three, four years has just changed my life just doing it live, right? And, and meeting people who could meet that expectation of the acapella, right? So somebody who can rap over those beats on that time frame. So, you know, it's all about discovery and finding yourself and really putting your name towards something that you kind of believe in. And on top of that, you know, there's no better feeling than finding that sweet sample that you know that will kick ass at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. So it's funny, you talked a little bit about Ableton. So like something that I, I don't really know Ableton very well, but like I, I've, I've seen people who use it. I've listened to music that uses it. Like one of the coolest things that I ever heard was maybe 10 years ago. Oh my God, I'm like dating myself right now. But about <laughs> 10 years ago, I was, I was in college and I went to this master class with this, uh, this jazz piano player who I really, really love named Vijay Iyer. <clears throat> and he talked about using Ableton and like setting parameters to like have, have it improvise as a synth along with you, you know? Like, mm -hmm. so there's all this cool stuff that you can do with Ableton. I, I guess the thing that I wanted to ask you about that was like, so when you're using Ableton in a, an actual live setting, like how much of it is improvised? How much of it is planned ahead of time? Like, do you know exactly what your set is going to look like? Or are you sort of like making it up as you go along? So, right. Yeah. Great question. So there's two aspects. So first there's like the planning, right? Getting yep. the set list down. So there's two, two views in Ableton, right? There's an arrangement view, which is like your normal DAW view, like you see in GarageBand. Yep. And then there's this live view that you can see where it's kind of like an Excel sheet with music. So you line up this Excel sheet with different beats, with the different BPMs. However, I'll take this, right? Okay. Which yep. is like your ordinary MIDI pad. This happens to be the Akai MPK Mini. This is perfect for beginners, by the way. Yeah, And there's a button on Ableton called the map mode. And all I have to do is I can map all sorts of different knobs to any knob that I want. 
Cool. So the improvised part are all of the effects that I have in my master chain. So yes, I plan the beats, but at the end of the day, I'm still kind of doing remixing by doing a low pass filter or a high pass filter or a delay or a beat repeat. I mean, I've been, I have a scratch pad now, so I've been scratching vinyl, like in the middle of all that too. So yeah, it's almost like it's computer programming for music. And that's just what's something that just really inspires me. It's just something that I've been really passionate about for the past like 10 years of my life. I can't think of anything else, but just learning these, you know, computer processes on music. And it just, that just breaks the surface, man. There's music theory, there's yeah. scales, there's modes. I could talk day in, day out, but the, improv- uh, the improvising is with the effects. And then the planning is with the beats. Cool. Okay. Very interesting. So, so you're talking about effects and, and like mapping different effects to knobs or whatever. And you mentioned a high pass filter, a low pass filter, and a delay. Like, what else? What else would you map to a knob? Like right, for your normal question. set. So, yeah. what I like to do is try to emulate this one sampler that everybody uses called the SPS 404. Okay, And it has over probably like 19 effects that a lot of producers like myself like to use. So I try to emulate that. So I'll use a high pass filter, which brings all the audio to the high section. So I'll go, I like use a low pass filter, which brings it to the bass. So you only yep. hear the bass. Mm-hmm. I'll use a delay. So it kind of fades to gray in the background, creates a soundscape, if you will. I like using a scratch, you know scratching records i like using this like it's almost like a machine powering down effect so we'll go yeah which is like a spiraling down i don't know there's a beat repeat which is really cool so you know if there's a song going you do 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 just create really cool transitions in between like the verse and the chorus um other than that i have kind of just like these filters uh that just keep it either like in a different soundscape you know, in a different frequency. And yeah. it just creates kind of like a really cool vibe. And also on Ableton, I do also have like a vinyl sim going on. So it there's a little crackle. So I love hearing that that vinyl crackle that you get when you first put the record on the player yeah. and you do it. So cool. Okay. So so you mentioned that uh that you've you've now got like a like I guess a turntable, right? That you can like scratch mm-hmm. with or or uh, so I was gonna ask like is that a thing that that people actually still do like um, where like you can, you actually have a beat on the, on the record and that you're like, you've got it like chalked down or whatever. And you're, so I don't, I don't use it for the beat. I'll yeah. have the beat, but what records that they do have these days are yeah. records that have samples on them that keep repeating throughout the record. Oh, okay. Very cool. Yeah. So there'll be like a 10 second loop of, you know, a couple of different things and it will loop all around, all around, all around. Yeah. Now, what they used to do back in the day is take like a crayon, yep. and they used to mark where the, the great spot would be so that they could always go back. Yep. But with the looping sound effects, and with me, I always like to just play around with what comes around, and you know, I like to be more free about it. And yep. I think everybody around me has been digging it, so just yeah. nothing but really positive vibes. No, it's super cool. Um, and, and I guess another question about the vinyl, like I see that you've got like crates full of it behind you. Like, yes. do, you, do you like, uh, do you go crate digging? Do you like find records for cool samples? Do you like... Uh... So when quarantine wasn't happening, yeah. there'd be times I would go out and try to find records. It really depends on, you know, where you go. Yep. There's a lot of more underground record shops and there's a lot of record shops that are in like, bookstores and, and whatnot um i liked going into like the one dollar section but yeah. also you know i think the internet is another great source i hate to say that yeah. but you know the internet right now during quarantine is probably like the next best thing to create digging yep and you know i'm sure everybody's using those songs there's nothing like finding a great sample though off of like a record that you found yeah. in the store and using it i've definitely done both methods many times before it's funny it kind of blows my mind like uh how much you can find on the internet now you know like i i remember when i was a kid i would be like 
just like trying so hard to find like these obscure like jazz records or something and like now it's just as easy as like just searching it in spotify (laughs) for sure for sure everything and and bootlegs there's so many crazy bootlegs on the internet too just like everything anything you could ever want to find it definitely comes with a cost (laughs) you know what i mean so um i think the best thing that i like about using youtube is that you could subscribe to these channels that yeah. have these like obscure music. Yep. Like obscure Japanese jazz, right? Yeah. You know, and then you can get those on the day that they obviously had put it on YouTube. Yeah. So you're like, sweet, okay, this sounds killer. You put it in yeah. Ableton and you're ready to go. You know, and I don't I what I like about Ableton is that I'm sure that no like master chain no chain at the end of the day is going to be the same everybody has like a different a different ear for things right yeah so if you ask me nick lovin like how does this sound like can you mix this can you master this for me i would definitely be like well i did a lot of research too you know what i mean and i'm sure that if you worked with ableton you can figure it out because like i said there's no one way to do anything yeah. on ableton. there's tons of different different things you can add to your chain. So I, I don't know. It's cool. It's really fun. Very cool. Um, and, and I think that's like, that's about the end of our interview, but, uh,
think that's like that's about the end of our interview but uh is there anything else well actually first of all like where can people find your music uh are there any records that use your your beats that you want to promote are, are there any records that are just beats that you want to promote like i don't know what should people go check out so quick promotion i got the nix mix volume one on spotify and soundcloud and yeah. Bandcamp. so if you want to go check that out you just look up nick lovin n-i-c-k-l-o-v-n all one word can't miss it can't Sick. miss it but pretty much just uh look forward to the future i hope that we are able to go and do this live and uh thank you again for having me on the quarantine cafe i really appreciate this hey thank you so much and and is there anything else that you want to say to the audience before you're out of here yes everybody enjoy the music i want to shout out terry borderline yeah. i want to shout out cambridge hip-hop i want to shout out quarantine cafe this is killer thank you so much thank you so much that was dj nick lovin and uh i'm your host callum mckenzie and we'll see all you guys again tomorrow at noon thanks man no problem